On the 25th of June 1941, the Continuation War started, a few days after the Germans had launched Operation Barbarossa, where they invaded the USSR. As a co-belligerent, Finland fought on the side of Germany to, to achieve what actually? Retake the lost territories from the Winter War or more? What were Finland's war aims during the Continuation War? There was the idea of a greater Finland. Did the Finns want to achieve this? Did the Finns had similar ideas of expanding their territory just as the Italians and the Germans had at that time? Keep watching to find out. Good to have you back on the channel. If you are new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I'm hustling history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, what are you waiting for? Consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when another video comes out. Let's first discuss the concept of Greater Finland, Sur Suomi, that would include all speakers of Finnish and closely related languages. Intrinsically linked was the thorny issue of East Karelia or Far Karelia, which is a long-standing and complicated topic. The Karelians were related to the Finns, but their region had never been under full Finnish control, so the Finns had no historical claim to this part of the USSR. During the 1918 Finnish War of Independence, Finnish Civil War, Karelians themselves were divided. Some wanted independence, others wanted to be part of Russia, and others favored union with Finland. British and German presence during this conflict complicated things further, perhaps something to cover in the future. A settlement between Soviet Russia and Finland was made on the 14th of October 1920. The Finns gave up their dreams of a greater Finland in exchange for the Arctic Sea Corridor of Petsamo, otherwise the pre-independence border between the two countries was reconfirmed. The treaty brought formal peace to the Finnish-Soviet-Russian relationship but did not erase mistrust or the dreams of territorial gain. And in some Finnish circles, the dreams of a greater Finland weren't forgotten. But did the Finnish government in World War II had similar dreams? The main reason for siding with the Axis as a co-belligerent during the Second World War was not the possible creation of a Greater Finland. For Finland, World War II started when the Soviets invaded the country in November 1939. This was the Winter War. The Hitler-Stalin Pact, aka the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, signed in August gave the USSR a free hand in Finland. Despite the valiant resistance of the Finnish soldiers against the Soviet onslaught, the Finns agreed with the March 1940 Moscow Peace Treaty, ceding several territories to the USSR, afraid that the Soviets would attack again because of ongoing Soviet pressure. The Finnish saw cooperation with Germany as the only way to secure their independence. Did the Finns want to retake their lost territories or create a greater Finland. For the Germans, it is easy to say why they invaded the USSR. The German war aims are spelled out in the Barbarossa Directive. The Germans wanted to destroy the Soviet armies in the western part of the USSR. Then they wanted to establish a line from the Volga River to Archangel. And Soviet factories beyond that line in the Urals could be taken care of by the Luftwaffe. It is not really easy to answer the question what the Finnish war aims were during the continuation war due to several reasons. Finnish civilian and military leaders were careful not to leave a paper trail in their dealings with Germany. They were very much aware that as a democratic state it didn't have much in common with the totalitarian Nazi state, but they needed them to stand strong against another, for them, more threatening totalitarian state, the Soviet Union. Since both war Finnish statements have little credence, we must therefore look at statements before and during the war. Second, like I mentioned before, 
Finland was a democracy, where public opinion played a large role. This changed by the ebb and flow of the war. When the Finnish forces were successful in the field, more people believed in expanding the war aims. When things went badly, it led to pressure to reduce the war aims or end the war. Thirdly, looking at historiography, writers had their own political persuasions and therefore emphasized, de-emphasized or even dismissed certain events or statements. Some historians argue that the Finns only want to recover their lost territories from the Winter War. Actually, this statement is embedded in the name of the war that followed the Winter War, the Continuation War, which implies that it was a continuation, a sequel, if you will, of the previous war. However, it is paintedly obvious from statements and events both before and during the war that they hoped to come out of the war with much more than the territory lost in 1940. And this raises the question, what is exactly meant by much more? What territories are we speaking of? Are we speaking of a possible creation of a greater Finland? The most ambitious statement was given by now President Risto Ruti in October 1941. He stated that Finland desired to gain the whole of the Kola Peninsula as well as the whole of Karelia and the future borders should proceed along the Sphere River, the southern shore of Lake Ladoga and finally along the Neva River where it entered the Gulf of Finland. A few weeks later he told the ambassador that Finland desired no common border with the USSR and therefore asked the Germans to annex the regions south of Archangel. Germany agreed Finland to take the whole of the Kola Peninsula although it should share its resources with Germany. This brings us to the question of East Karelia. Did the Finns want to take it or not? Let's take a look at prominent figure Karl Mannerheim, commander-in-chief of the Finnish Defensive Forces. His post-war memoirs are quiet about this issue. However, in the order to his troops on the 28th of June 1941, he stated, Brothers in arms, follow me for the last time, now that Karelia is rising, and Aurora will light a new day for the Finns. On the 8th of July, the Finnish radio carried the following message. We promise the Karelians that our sword will not rest until Karelia has been liberated. The freedom of Karelia and the greater Finland is the goal that beckons us in this mighty world of historical events. You can argue that this is the proof that the Finns want to take the whole of Karelia. One aspect I must mention. It is also possible that these statements were made to fire up the fighting spirit of the Finnish troops and did not necessarily represent the views of the entire military and civilian Finnish leadership. In the months after the kickoff of both Operation Barossa and the Continuation War, the Finns retook the lost territories they lost to the USSR in the Winter War. However, they advanced further. In Finnish government circles, there were heated debates between liberals and conservatives with different opinions about what to do. And these were also heavily influenced by the ebb and flow of the war. One German general believed most Finns only wanted to retake the lost territories. Among the military and academics, there was hope for creating a greater Finland. However, as the Germans made more progress in the USSR during the summer months, the ranks of the more ambitious grew. It seems that the Finns in general did not realize that the outcome of their continuation war was fully dependent on the outcome of the German-Soviet war. If the Germans failed to meet their objectives, it would jeopardize Finland's position, which eventually happened. But before it went bad, the Finns did manage to capture large parts of eastern Karelia.
And here they set up a military administration. The Finnish government took territories in the direction of a greater Finland by ethnically cleansing the newly conquered lands. The flight of almost 70% of Soviet Karelia's population into the USSR left only about 85,000 inhabitants, half of whom were deemed nationals, that is, ethnic Finns and others who spoke Finnic languages such as Karelian and Vaps. The non-national half of the population, mostly Russians, was subjected to various resettlement schemes. What these resettlement schemes look like and how it all play out, that I will cover in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Shout out to my patrons. Special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Liam Devlin, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Turanova, Haley, Mark Little Hill, Janusz Jorgenkiewicz, Joan, Justin Tabell, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Way Back History, Luesh Pichera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, and Mike West. So consider becoming a patron because with your donations I can continue this work. If you haven't seen the video about how Finland became a co-belligerent, well you can click right here. And if you're interested in Finnish history in general, I have a playlist for you. You can find it right here. Give this video a like, share it with your friends, subscribe if you have not already. Thanks for watching and I see you later.